This is the plaintiff, Mark Alford, against Dinelli. He says he saw the defendant crash into his parked 2017 Lexus. By the time he walked to the parking lot, the defendant bolted from the scene, so he called the cops. Once his insurance contacted the defendant, she denied ever being there. After getting fed up with the insurance company run around, he decided to sue this lady on his own and is seeking the $2,374.33 he needs to repair his car. This is the defendant, Nabria Shanti Sloan. She says the plaintiff's claiming her blue Chevy bumped into his Lexus. And she said she had no idea what this guy was talking about because she doesn't drive a blue Chevy. If she'd been in an accident, she would have owned up to it. She has insurance, and her husband makes good money, so she has no motive to hit and run. Bottom line, this is a case of mistaken identity, and she owes nothing. She's accused of crashing and dashing. All parties, please, are you ready? Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant crashed into his park 2017 yeah, Lexus, we'll but she insists driving. that she doesn't drive a blue Chevy, so she can't be the culprit. It's she the, the case of, I did not drive my Chevy to the levy. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome, ma'am. Okay, so you do volunteer work at a medical center, correct? Yes. All right, so sometime in July this last summer, what happened? On July 3rd, at approximately 10 a.m., our facility opened its doors to accept uh, clients. At about 10 after 10, the defendant walked into the facility, approached the director who was seated right behind me, and asked about an upcoming appointment. The director asked the defendant for her name. She did, she, she, the defendant gave her name, and then the uh, uh, director looked up her, all the information that needed about an upcoming appointment. The uh, defendant then left the facility to go to her car. My office faces the parking lot. My desk faces the parking lot, a completely unobstructed view. I watched her walk across the parking lot, and the parking lot is very small. It only has 11 spaces. So we just opened up. There was only three cars in the parking lot. My car, the defendant's car, and another volunteer's car. I went back to work, and then I, I heard this loud, sudden crash. I look up, and I see a tan Pontiac had backed right into my uh, Lexus. And uh, I, I was shocked. I, I stood up to, to talk to the person, and it, Without hesitation, she accelerated the car and flew out of that parking lot at a high rate of speed. I mean, I tried to run after her, and it Describe was very intentional. Describe the car for me. It was a tan Pontiac is all I could see. I mean, now I have more information about it, but it, it was definitely a tan Pontiac. No, one Is that what you told the insurance company? Yeah. Yes. Did you ever tell them it was a blue Ford? No. Did never. you ever tell them it was a blue anything? No, I didn't. I never Did you ever that. give a different color? No. Were you there that day? Um, no, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. You weren't there at all? No, I have records of when I went. I only went twice. And I went up there to get my um, information of when the last times I was there. And she pulled up my record, so. What um, day do you go in to find out your, when your appointment is? July 8th. It was on the 8th. That's the day of her appointment, Your Honor. Do you have your records? Yes. May I see them? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I don't know when you walked in there, but there wouldn't be a record of it because you're only walking in to find out when your appointment is. Right, but um, so July it wouldn't be July 8th when you're walking in to find out when your appointment is, because on July 8th they're writing out an ultrasound. But so every time you go in, you have to sign, like. This then is show me that. Show me oh, I don't signed have in records that show your name of when you came in. That's All what right. So what is. what's he talking about here? Do you have any idea what he's talking about? Um, no, actually, July third. I didn't even know I was pregnant. I found out I was pregnant um on the like a couple of days later. July third. I wasn't even there at the center, but um, well, when I first arrived, my husband had dropped me off, and the parking lot. He said it was only three people in the parking lot. Um, this parking lot is full. It was a lot of people in the parking lot. So I'm not, I'm not finna park all the way down there and then walk all the way back up here. So he dropped me off in the front and he went back to park and then he, um, walked back up with me. And, um, he said that I hit his car so hard and so loud and fled the scene. For one, I had insurance on my car 
and I had my daughter in the car safety first. I don't care if it was my fault or whose ever fault it was. If I would have hit someone's vehicle, I would have stopped to make sure my baby was okay for one. And for two, I would have noticed that I hit somebody's car because the crash would have been loud enough for me to be like, oh, snap, let me stop. I hit somebody's car. And I have pictures of the parking lot. Who was line. driving? Um, I was driving when we left. My husband was driving when we pulled up. I'm going to show you a picture of the parking lot. According to you, go ahead and go over there. Go ahead and show me with your finger what you say it did. Well, here's my view, right, clearly. I have a window right there. What, when I heard the crash, I saw the tan Pontiac impacted my car. I, that's the first time I saw it was right here. And then I, when I stood up, I heard the high acceleration of the vehicle, and she left so rapidly out of this way. All right, go ahead and go back. Now, according to you, he contacts your insurance company. Yes. What did the insurance company say to you? Well, they started giving me a say. First thing they said was, we do not show her vehicle as tan. The police report verifies that she has a registered tan Pontiac, and I saw a tan Pontiac. According to you, he told your insurance company it was a blue Ford? Yeah. Do you have any evidence of that? Um, my husband, he was, um, on, when they, because they kept calling me, and I'm like, Do you have any, any paperwork to show me from your insurance company? Any of the No, his insurance no company, call, they just called me. Apparently, he goes to your house and takes pictures of your vehicle. Your vehicle's tan. Right, so, but no, my, my vehicle is tan, but that's not what his insurance company was saying when they called me. Okay, they you're going to have to prove that. If I give you a recess... Oh, I, would, I can't prove it, so yeah, I'm not going to See, that's on critical, that. because that's huge. Right. If he's going around saying, it's a blue car, he didn't see anything. Right. Uh, and he's just guessing who But is. if he see my, see but, my vehicle... But, but if he says, it's the lady who just walked in to find out mm -hmm. when her appointment was, mm -hmm. and we know you went there to find out when your appointment mm -hmm. was, and if he says, I heard the crash and I looked and she was still connected to my car and it's a tan Pontiac, and in fact, you drive a tan Pontiac, mm -hmm. he starts to not sound like he's making it up, okay, right? Fine. So I'll give him that. Who gave you her home address? How did you get it, I mean? It was in the police report. All right, and then you went by that home, correct? Yes. And you took some photographs? Yes. Okay. My insurance agent suggested it was a good idea. And if you'll notice, the damage matches perfectly. Just wanted to give you an idea. Okay, now there's her vehicle. That's her vehicle. Yeah, and I circled, if you notice the black smudge on her bumper, I have black smudge on my car. And that matches perfectly. Is this your car? Yeah, that's my car, the white one. And you'll Is notice. that the spot you park in? Yes, that's a, Ironic. And here is the damage to your car. Yes, if you zoom in, you can see my, the black smudge. I took other pictures that were closer. Yeah, that's my view right there. That's what I saw. Right. Is this from your window? Yes. And that's the black smudge. Can I see the repair estimate? Yes. All right. Let's talk about what we know and what we don't know. So he identifies the car, says he saw her do it, and she was in the area. Is that enough proof for him to win? Seems like a lot of coincidences. It does indeed. Is it enough proof for him to win? Uh, does he have any other witnesses? Nope. It was just him, but he says, I'm an eyewitness. I saw it. So it's her word against his word? Her word against his, but he identified the car. And she was there. Get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, That's not enough? No. No, it, 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 how could you prove that he actually saw her? It's his word against Yeah, but, it's, but that's the case with any eyewitness, right? He's the witness for himself? Yeah. All right. All right, <laughs> going inside the courtroom. We know that something hit his car that morning. Mm -hmm. We know that because he immediately calls the police. We know that the something that hit his car is someone who was there between 10 when it opens and 1028 when he places the call to the police officer. Okay. We know you were there. We know you were there because he happens to know that it was a day when you were walking in there to ask about when your appointment was. We know you say, no, no, the day I walked in to ask what my appointment was was July 8th, but I know that's not true because that's a day where they were already writing things, scripts out for you. So I know that's not accurate. Your appointment was actually July 8th. So I know you were there beforehand. We know that he knows who it is because he's sitting there and mm -hmm. he knows the one person who's been there. You know, this isn't a criminal case. You didn't get charged with leaving the scene of an accident, which is a crime, okay? It's a civil case where mm -hmm. he has to prove that it is more likely than not. That's right. all he's got to prove. 
I'm asking you, if not you, then who? He's looking right out the window. That's where it is. He immediately calls the police. We know you were in there that day, and lo and behold, you drive a tan Pontiac. The damage on the corner of your car, is not. it wasn't like a crash that would kill somebody, mm -hmm. but it was a bump, and that costs money on a 2017 Lexus. Okay. It costs some cash. When you tell me my husband has a good job and I don't need to do that, I'm fully insured. Yeah, no one who leaves the scene of an accident necessarily has to, but when they do, they got to pay up. Mm -hmm. And there is a motive to do that, which is I don't feel like being in trouble paying a $500 deductible or whatever else people do. But I didn't know I hit his car because I would have stopped because, like I said, I had my baby. Maybe that's car. accurate. Maybe that's accurate. And Maybe you I didn't know. Drove off. But I'm pretty sure you hit his car. Let's okay, assume. Well, $2,000 worth of damage from backing out like that. Do you hear me talking? I hear you. Do you hear me? That don't seem like $2,000 worth of damages backing out like that. Really? I didn't bet you can't even back out that parking lot that fast to hit this man's car and cause two thousand three hundred and something dollars worth of damage. Now you sound like you hit and run. Okay, well I All know right. what I did and I didn't. Do Even that. if we take away the tan Pontiac part. He's literally watching the car that just left. This he is an office he, he that's this big. And he immediately, this is not like he walked out at five o'clock mm. in the afternoon and then looked for somebody to pin it on because he noticed damage to his car. I know this because I know when he called the police, it's right on the police report. It's 1028. All right. I find that it is more likely than not you. I find that the damage to the vehicle is, is a reasonable damage. And I find uh, that you need to pay him two thousand three hundred and seventy-four dollars and thirty-three cents. Okay. Good luck. Well, and what's a fascinating case, Miss Sloan, the defendant, the judge says she is convinced you did it, then you're gonna have to pay for it. What I'm not paying for anything, baby boy. You're crazy. What do you mean? I'm not paying for anything, baby boy. You're crazy. Do you not understand? Because I didn't hit his car. Like, why would, and then why would you come by my house? Do you know if I would have had something and you would have been in my yard, it would have went a whole lot differently. I didn't give you permission to come up in my yard. So I'm ready to go. Like, now, please. Well, you got a judgment against you for $2,300. Okay, right, cool. Well, good luck getting it. That's all I got to say. Okay. I'm not scared. Good luck with you then. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Agostinelli. That's one of the issues in a, in a small claims court. You may have to keep chasing her to get the money. Well, that, that was one of my concerns. I knew I was 100% accurate in what I saw, and I'm 100% certain she was there and she did it. And, uh, and I did not go on her property to take her vehicle, to take pictures of her vehicle. I was across the street yeah. and zoomed in on, got all the damage. Her damage matched my damage I mean, perfectly. You, you really played detective here. Well, I had to. I knew, I knew I'd do my homework or... It, it was just my word against well, hers. Well, good for you. All right. Good luck. I hope you can, uh, <laughs> I, you got the judgment now. You got the power to go get the money from her. Okay. okay. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Harvey? You know, I got to say, take pictures as soon as there is an impact, even through the window. That will make your case.